I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite plant burgers. I call these the best no bean burgers because let's face it, most plant burgers are made with beans and beans are great and they're healthy, but not everyone can eat them. So this looks exactly like a bean burger, but without beans and it's delicious. So we're going to start with our pan, which I'm heating up over high heat because I'll always start with an onion. I have a motto, everything starts with an onion, but you need to saute it. I make sure the pan's hot enough by just putting a little bit of water in. If it dances around in little balls, it's hot enough, it's ready. So I have my chopped red onion. And I just place it in the pan. And I'm just going to let these guys hang out for a little bit. I always make sure I have some liquid nearby if it starts to stick. Actually, I'm going to be using a can of these fire-roasted salt-free tomatoes, so I can actually use the liquid for this, too. I've got my other ingredients ready, which is some chopped red bell pepper, some shredded carrots, and garlic. I love this little tool. They come in all different sizes because I can finely mince the garlic in one hand. I'm ambidextrous. The more pulls, the finer it is. I like it better than the garlic press because it's a lot easier to clean. You can use it for nuts or carrots or any kind. You need to chop something. You don't want to take out your food processor. So you can see it's like this. I'm going to pull it even more, make it even finer. Nothing wrong with using minced garlic in a jar. But I'm going to add this after the onion is sauteed. Garlic can burn, so I don't add it right away. I can kind of hear when it's time to start moving it around. And it starts to feel like it's going to stick, but whoops, I'm going to use this. I'm going to add a little of the tomato juice. And then stir it around. You don't need oil to saute or even caramelize. You need a liquid, water, broth. In this case, I'm using the juice for the tomatoes because it's going to cook off anyway. And let me tell you, you'll not only save a ton of calories and money by not using oil, but cleanup is so much easier. Anytime you feel like, hey, it's starting to stick, a little bit more water. feel the heat's too hot and it's browning too fast, you can turn it down a bit. Cooked onion gives every recipe so much flavor. When you feel that your onion is to your liking, then you can add your garlic. and lots of it. I always feel with garlic, if a little is good, a lot is better. Just to get it out of there, I'll just put my little bit of water in here. And then I'm going to add the rest of my ingredients, my carrots and my red bell pepper. I prefer red bell peppers because the green ones are unripe and they always give me and other people indigestion. So I just want to cook this about 10 minutes or so until all the vegetables are nice and soft. And I'm going to add my can of tomatoes. And this is what we're going to add to our other ingredients to make our burger. If you can find the fire roasted tomatoes, they do have a little bit more flavor than just your regular 
canned or jarred tomatoes. You can make them yourself, but it's kind of a lot of work. You'll know that this is ready when the carrots start getting in. I love making up burgers because they freeze so well, and then I always have a healthy meal. So when the carrots and bell pepper are nice and soft and all the liquid cooks off, it's ready for the next step. So now I'm going to show you how you mix everything together. So I have all my wonderful sautéed vegetables here. And in this bowl, I have some other ingredients, specifically henna yams. These are white sweet potatoes. They also are often known as Jersey sweet potatoes, batata, sometimes Korean yam. You can use Japanese. You can often find these in ethnic stores. I'm lucky. I live in California. They have them just even in the regular grocery store, as well as stores like Sprouts and Whole Foods, of course. I have some cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can substitute Italian parsley or just leave it out. And black rice. The black rice is the secret to getting these to look like an actual burger or an actual bean burger without beans. And I cook this in advance. And I also cook the sweet potatoes in advance. And I prefer always roasting my sweet potatoes for at least an hour to 90 minutes. I get very large ones because when you microwave them and steam them, it, it just doesn't bring out the flavor. But slow roasting really brings out the natural sugars and the caramelization and makes them even more delicious. I'm going to add my seasonings. This is a salt-free chili powder, a mild one that I really like from Whole Foods. Chili powder can be really spicy. My husband does not like spicy things. This is a very mild one. And my other seasonings are smoked paprika, which is different than regular paprika. It gives it that nice smoky flavor, cumin, and just a little bit of chipotle powder, which isn't really too spicy because chipotle is a smoked jalapeno. Then I'm going to add all my sautéed vegetables to you can just eat those sautéed vegetables if you want over rice. Be delicious. And then mix it all together. Refrigerate it a few hours or even overnight for the best texture and for the patties to really stick together. That's just been my experience. Honestly, I've never tried to cook it immediately. Now you can use food service gloves, which I happen to have a pair here to really get it mixed together. But right now the filling is still hot. So I'm just going to try to do it with a spatula. But you want to get it all mixed together. You probably could use the orange sweet potatoes in this. I never have just because I prefer the Japanese or the Hannah, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Just think the white ones taste better. These are just so yummy. I mean, every ingredient in here, at least I like. So when you put them all together, they are delicious. Just got to get everything. See, really, what really will make this a lot easier, and I'm just going to do it, is putting food service gloves on. Because then you can really, really mush it together and get it fully incorporated. I always make sure I use latex-free gloves because every now and then you have somebody with a latex allergy and if you want them to eat your food, you want to make sure. See, so, so when you can really mix it in, put all that nice love and good energy in the food, it just it makes it so much easier. And, you know, I have rolled these into little balls for meatballs, not meatballs, but veggie balls and air fried them about 20 minutes at 400. That's kind of a fun thing to do. They take about 30 or 45 minutes on one side and then you have to flip them for another 15 or 20. So if you're in a hurry, you could do it that way. Some of my other burger recipes, I actually just bake in a nine by nine inch pan for about an hour and 15 minutes. And that works for me because I don't mind eating the square burger, but we're going to make these in the traditional round shape. And again, you can actually cut these veggies up even finer than I did so that people that are not loving vegetables won't even see the bell pepper or the carrot. But I have it really, really nicely mixed. I'm going to refrigerate this. And then when we're done, I don't measure, but you can take a half a cup measure. But usually what I just do is kind of do it like that. But let's chill it first. So after you chill it for a few hours, you're going to make it into patties. You could take just a half a cup measure if you want each one the same and just plop it down. 
They actually make burger presses, but most people have a measuring cup. I'm using the nonstick silicone baking sheet. You can use whatever baking sheet you have and put a piece of parchment paper over it so it won't stick. I love this because it's reusable. You can use it for baking too. And then I'll usually just shape it a little bit better with my hands. That they're nice and round. And I love the smell, smoky. You can make them bigger, but the bigger you make them, the longer they'll take to cook. Whatever size you make them, try to make them all the same size so that they'll cook evenly. You'll want to bake them in a preheated oven on one side, depending on your oven for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. You know that it's time to flip them when you can flip them easily with a spatula. If they start to stick, then they need a little bit longer. Then after you flip them, you'll cook them 10 or 15 minutes more. When they come out of the oven.